Hey there guys, how's it going? I'm back with part 2 of the third person shooter tutorial series. And in this tutorial we're going to be adding some shooting to the game, as you can see right here. As you can see, I completely demolished that guy and when you shoot nearby them, they will be alerted and they will fire back at you. As you can hear, and then, well, you just shoot them. And they'll turn into these little triangles on the ground. Um, so, yeah, I've added a little bit of lens flare, as you can see, and... Well, that's actually all we're going to be doing in this tutorial. It's a very important step for a third-person shooter, of course, the shooting bit. So, um, that's why I thought I'd make a separate tutorial on it. Also, I added a little bit of lighting and, of course, these enemies, but... Yeah, that, that's all there is to say, actually. So, I'm really excited to do this series. Please tell me what the next part should be about. I actually don't know what is going to be, uh, uh, you know... You say that tackled, what problem is going to be tackled in the next tutorial of this one. Maybe it's going to be about uh, doing objectives or something like that. Or maybe different heights, other weapons, I don't know. Please tell me in the comments below if you, if you do happen to know of anything at all. Uh, so, oh yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to show. Let's go to Game Maker Studio. Hey there guys, welcome back to Game Maker Studio. Today we're going to be doing part 2 of the third person shooter tutorial series on this channel. So let's get started right away. I've added one sprite, oh no, two sprites. Uh, one for the crosshair that I used in another game of mine. That was the last video I uploaded. It was the first person shooter to, um, video in which you had to survive waves of robots. Was That crosshair has been implemented to this game right now. So if you wanted to know how to make that one, um, well, I'm going to be explaining how to make it. And there's a sprite bullet as well, which is this, just this little... Uh, uh, line that's all it is and make sure when you make a bullet like this oh excuse me uh, to tick precise collision checking and separate collision mass but collision separate collision mass will be ticked automatically when you tick this one because this is really important because as you can see it's only one pixel wide and that is for a reason which I'll be um, getting back to later um, or I've added one more texture, so the texture of the sun is very low res, of course, but if you want to just add a better lens flare texture, that's that's fine. Of course, please do that, because this one is just very low res. It's, it's not very good. It doesn't look very good either, so why not change it? I didn't add any scripts um, other than these scripts, of course. These have been here ever since the first uh, tutorial that I did on this one, so no need to check this one again. And then the objects, well, I didn't really add that many things to the game. I've added the enemy, the triangle, temporary lighting, which isn't important at all. It just makes the game look a little better. Um, object bullet is new, object bullet enemy is new, and object sun is new. Well, it's actually a, a lot of new objects now that I look at it. So let's start with the changes that I made with object player. Uh, you may remember in the previous tutorial of this one, you can only shoot, and it would make a gunshot noise, a little gunfire sound, but that's all it did. It didn't, like, uh, shoot a bullet or something. It didn't fire a bullet at all. It, um, oh, it didn't do anything but make a sound. Well, now, it creates this, this object, object bullet. And object bullet is right here, and I'll be explaining it right now, it just... It's not in chronological order, I know, but it just makes sense to do this one after this one, after uh, the change that I made here. I'm sorry, it's still very early, as you can see, for me anyway. Um, I set the speed to 250, and the initial speed, I called it in speed for some reason, is equal to speed. And why did I do that? That's because I use delta time for now. As you may know from my previous videos, my computer isn't doing very well, so I might experience some lag somewhere. Um, every now and then, so that's why I'm using delta time, and you need a variable like this. Uh, Z is 100 by default, pitch is object player's pitch, direction is object player's facing, and image angle is direction. Well, image x scale is equals initial speed, and that's when the one pixel wide sprite actually comes in. This uh, is set to this one, otherwise you will have some messed up collisions. Um, Let's say it like this, when an object has this speed, 
and the sprite is like smaller than uh, this value right here it will just go straight through it you can't hit anything well you can hit massive objects but you can't hit small objects like uh, enemies or something so that's why this is very necessary and this is very necessary as well otherwise this won't work anyway so that's why I did that let's go to the bullets you've seen this one in almost all my tutorials now the C plus 10 Dectorat pitch times the speed and here's the Delta X thing. I've uh, found this from a tutorial on YouTube. I have a link in the description to it if you want to check it out, how this actually works. Um, I've set 30 divided by a million times the Delta time. Uh, so if your game is running at 30 FPS by default, and you'll, for example, want it to, uh, you know, extend it to 60 FPS or something like that, the game will not be s sped up or anything. It will just go at the same speed, just a little smoother which is very very handy also when you have it also works the opposite way if you have a very crap PC and you can only run the game at like 5 or 10 FPS which is um, not very good as the game doesn't look very good the game will not be slowed down any or anything it will just go um, frame skipping that's what it was called oh man really this only happens when I record tutorials I don't even know what it says it just and dismiss it right away. Oh, what the hell? I hope you didn't hear that. That was embarrassing. So when it touches the enemies, this one, and the Z is smaller than or less than 207, then the enemy will explode into little triangles. And it will also destroy itself. So let's go to the enemies right away and see what changes I've made to this one. This is basically the... Um, Oh, wait. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. I, I must have been confused by something. Um, the model is File Enemy, File Enemy Reflection. Uh, I've given it a little reflection just to, for the graphics sake. I'm going to delete it, of course. I mean, it's not really necessary or anything. I still have the Ambient Occlusion texture right here. You don't need it at all. I'm not using Ambient Occlusion for this particular object. But I am using things like Glass, Audio Create Stream, Sound of Glass aiming is 360, random 360 by default. And all this other cool stuff that isn't really that important. Shoot is set to 30 by default, ammo is 404 by default, and reload is 60 by default. You can change all these things to whatever you like. You can set ammo to a million, then the, of course the enemy will have uh, pretty much unlimited ammo. Then you shoot, set shoot to 30, I mean that's the delay between shots. That it's, oh, Shut up. That's all it is, and reload is just a reload time. Uh, when it destroys, it just plays the noise, because the bullet destroys this object, destroys the enemy itself, so it only needs to play this noise. That's all it does. In the step event, the enemy will be aiming at you, and the, there's the Delta X thing again. So if the if he saw you, this little variable goes to your own position, to the player's position, I mean, and he will aim at you. And when he aims at you, he'll be able to fire at you. So when shoot shoot goes uh, down by one every so often, every step. And then when ammo is smaller than zero, here's the reloading thing, by the way. But this actually connects to this. If shoot is less than zero and the enemy has ammo, he can actually fire at you. And it will create the object bullet enemy, which is this object, which is basically the player's object. Uh, player's uh, bullet object just a little different. I tweaked it a little bit. It's now following the enemy's position, of course. It would have been strange if the enemy bullets would actually follow the player's current facing position. So that's not what happens. And the other thing that's changed is when it touches the player instead of the enemy, the, and the player will take a little hit. The screen will go right for a little bit. Uh, uh, white, I mean red for a little bit and your health will go down by 10. Well that's all it does, it's only little changes to it. When it hits the wall it just destroys and makes a little ricochet sound right here. So that's that. Yeah, You may notice that I'm actually racing through this little tutorial that's because I've had a pull up and people thought that my tutorials were a little slow so that's why I tried a little different tactic I may sound a little nervous, I don't know why that is. Oh, maybe I do in a week I'll hear if I pass my exams. So, uh, 
<laughs> you may know how I feel. Um, as you can see, I activated lighting here and I deactivated here again because I don't want lighting to apply to all objects in the game. I want the lighting to apply to very specific objects like the enemy and the player. There are the and the little triangles, of course. Those are the only three objects that use the lighting in Game Maker Studio. Uh, let's see what else we got. Well, we got temporary lighting right here. These are just four lights, four directional lights. These are for the backlighting. These make it dark blue, and these make it white. Frontal lighting that comes from the sun, of course. And here's the little sun object. It's just this. Oof, I don't know what that was. It's just this little object. It's just a very big wall that's very distant to the player as well. That just um, applies the sun texture that we saw earlier. Uh, step event. Um, this appears clamped to 0 and 1. Didn't show that, I think. Oh, no, not this one. This one. So if there's a collision line between the player's position and the sun pos solar position, let's call it solar position for now, when there's a collision with parent wall, the sun will actually disappear behind the object. And here comes the dis variable again. This is set to 1 by default, and when it, it, just, it just disappears when it gets behind a wall, or something like that. And here it is clamped again, yeah. I've also added the enemies. I've given them the wrong sprite. I'm sorry about that. Here's object enemy, as you can see right there, the, the bottom of Game Maker Room Editor. You can see that this is object enemy, this is object enemy, this one, this one, this one. And if you want to add some more enemies, just, just spam them around or whatever. And add as many objects as, as you want, of course, but it may give you some minor frame rate issues if you have too many of these guys blown up as they create about a hundred of these particles so uh, just be a little careful with that so yeah I think that is all I wanted to explain for now so please tell me what the next third person shooter tutorial should be about maybe it should be about objectives maybe it should be about um, I don't know uh, driving vehicles <laughs> it could be anything so please leave a leave a comment about that and please leave a like if you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.